Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you a review of the new Field World F5 5-inch um, on-camera monitor, field monitor. About a year ago, I did a review of one of their 7-inch monitors, and so I'm back to give you a look at an alternate model here. As you can see, I've got it mounted on this little setup here. And, uh, and so we're going to take a look at some of the features and functionality of this field monitor today. So one of the first things I want to do, just giving you a look at uh, physically here, is that the monitor itself, as you can see, as I noted, it's a five inch monitor. It is, um, has a native 1080p resolution, but um, natively supports 4K. And so output of the Sony a7R Mark III is of course 4K. And what this allows you to do is to have a, you know, a 4K uh, feed here, but in a 1080p resolution. So as you can see, it actually has a fairly deep sunshade that's really easy to add. It's, um, there's a Velcro, Velcro surround on all of this, so you can actually just um, collapse that down really tight and easily take it on and off. And so we'll just set that aside for a while. Now, one of the, the main things that might make this a better option for you than one of the larger models is the fact that unlike this, uh, this model came with basically just a foot, which you know, it's cold shoe mountable, or of course you can do something similar, and I've shown it mounted on a motorized gimbal system. Particularly if you're using a two-handle gimbal system, it gives you a little bit more uh, real estate to play with things like that. But in this case, the fact that it has this kind of bracket, almost like an L bracket that comes off, it allows you to uh, do a few things. Uh, first of all, it allows you to really control the the viewing angle. And so for example, um, if I rotated it up into a position like this, if I was in a, a top viewing position, it would make that, I can basically just set it at the perfect angle that I'm working at. And so that in itself is very useful. Obviously you have the option of, you know, completely flipping it. If you're wanting a solution, say if you are a, you know, a vlogger or, you know, even if you were doing something like what I'm doing right now, you would have the ability to put that up. I will note one thing, if you're using a top mounted monitor, it's a few inches higher. You do have to be careful because you're, you naturally want to look at the picture and it's close enough that it's not bad, but you will note that your, your, your view is just a little bit off. You're not really looking into camera, you're looking slightly above the camera. And so you do have to be a little bit careful about that. But in terms of the, the physical design here, it's really easy. And because it's so lightweight, it's easy to put it in a variety of different places to help you to do what you need to do. And so, um, as you can see, now that we've got the back uh, faced here, there's actually a battery plate. Now it doesn't come with batteries, but you can get an optional plate that will allow you to either use uh, some of the Sony batteries, like an SF970 battery is a good one to put in there. You can also um, have a Canon plate where you can use Canons like, um, L6P6N or LP6N, something like that. Uh, those type batteries, LP6 series batteries, you can also use in that. In terms of how long a battery life you get, um, you can get you know fairly, depending on the battery capacity, obviously you put on there, and so it will range some. It's possible to get up to a couple of hours depending on the battery size. One thing I, I have noted, and that is that if you keep the battery in there, there seems to be a little bit of a phantom power drain. And so even if you have it turned off and stored, it will slowly, slowly deplete, deplete the battery. And so just something to look out for. Now, what makes these even more useful is not just the viewing angle and the size of the screen. And I will note, by the way, that the screen quality is really, really good. The viewing angle is excellent. Color um, accuracy is really good. And so um, it's amazing how vivid the picture looks. And so that's certainly useful for that. But what they've built in is that there are, along the top, there are a number of buttons that will allow you to um, program different functionality in and some kind of most useful, kind of some direct custom buttons that you can assign a value to. And so included in that, um, you can you can put it a number of different values, but included in that, you can put in um, an option that will um, have, uh, for example, like focus peaking show up on there, um, which is always, of course, very useful. You can choose different overlays to throw on there. And so having it on a larger screen makes it more easily, not only to visually confirm focus, but also to visually see 
what's in folks at any time because you're just working with a little more screen real estate. And so that functionality actually works really well. Um, you have the option to keep a histogram on there. I actually personally keep an, a histogram on there all the time because relative to the rest of the screen, it's quite, you know, it's small enough to where it's just useful to have that there visually all the time. But one thing that I actually really like that I keep now of put on there on um, one of those programmable buttons if I'm using a manual focus lens is that you have the ability to actually magnify the image on the screen independent of the camera itself. So you can just touch you know, on the F5 and it will actually magnify that, which is really useful in that what it does, unlike magnifying an image, for example, in camera, what these cameras allow you to do is you can magnify an image to determine focus before video starts then that resets. If you're using it in the monitor, you can actually keep that um, area magnified. And so if you're you know, trying to work within focus, focus pull on a specific area, um, it, it's actually, I find it a very useful thing, particularly if I'm doing a focus pull and I want to make sure that where I'm going to end up that I can really nail down that focus point. So a number of things that are really, really useful. Some of the other things just kind of run through the, the different things you can apply, um, the kind of feature list. It's got a histogram, as I've noted, peaking filter. Um, it can show false colors if you want to do that. It can show you exposure with zebras over um, what's you know exposed or improperly exposed. As noted, it's pixel to pixel, and so um, it doesn't do it will show you it's it's 4k compatible and though it's not natively it will show you a pixel to pixel level um, it gives you a check field option if you're wanting to you know, do some color work you can throw up a grid to show you um, for example a kind of a rule of nine rule of, of thirds kind of thing and so you can throw the nine uh, grid up there it does have embedded audio and so um, you can see audio levels. You also have um, a headphone monitoring jack on here and so you can actually monitor. So for example, you're using HDMI in, you've got an audio signal coming in. You can actually take um, the feed off of there and monitor from there, which might be useful if nothing else, it gets you up at a higher level for your, your headphone jack, um, a little bit further away from the camera. And so that's useful there. You have the option of freezing the image on the screen, uh, zoom in as I've noted. You can do an image flip, which of course is useful if you're going to, you know, kind of you know, reverse the screen to where you're monitoring, um, front monitoring it. Um, you can go into an anamorphic mode. So several useful things on that. I will also note a few things. I've noted the battery power. You also have an option. You can purchase an adapter um, that will, you can use a DCN. And so you can, you know, just run it indefinitely off of that. You've also interestingly, however, got a DC out here. And so if you've got a pretty hefty, um, battery on there. You can actually also run uh, the DC out to help to charge your camera somewhat, which is an interesting feature there. As noted, there's a headphone monitoring. There's also a USB port where you can do uh, firmware updates to it. And so, um, you know, those kind of things are useful because it shows you're going to extend your functionality from it. I will also note that there is an HDMI out. And so um, full size HDMI in, full size HDMI out. And so if you're actually wanting to monitor, but then also run out to a separate recorder or to a live feed, um, you have the option of doing that as well. So pretty versatile in the, the different options that you have there. And as noted, there are four different um, four different buttons along the top, custom functions, but then also some four different directions to be able to navigate menus. And then of course a power button on and off. And so um, the build quality is actually really quite nice on this. It's, you can tell that it's, it's made where it could take a little impact. Actually, in some ways it feels much higher grade than the one that I reviewed last year. So I'm impressed with the uh, progress on that. And then also the arm feels very sturdy while also being lightweight. And so a lot of good stuff with the F5. And if you're looking for a smaller monitor size, um, I think this can be a great option. You know, if you're wanting something lightweight on a gimbal, great option there as well. Also price point is, is reasonable on it. It clocks in at Amazon right now at 159 bucks. I'll throw some links to some various options of where to buy it from in the description down below there.
And so if you want to take a look at that, you can also find uh, links in the description to follow me on social media, um, become a patron and have early access to some of my content. You can follow me um, at Instagram now. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.